Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, so it's time to get into this damn makeup drama, okay? So once again, Jaclyn Hill, people are coming for her neck. Jaclyn Hill finally spoke out. She finally talked about all the hoopla surrounding her lipsticks, all the drama. She claims that, you know, they might be like a few, you know, just messed up batches, you know, 0.0.1%, but that, you know, everything was FDA approved. She bought receipts showing that, you know, these batches were supposedly made this year. Okay, but what's going on now is that people have been testing the batches. They sent them out for testing, and now the results are coming in. Like when Maury Povich tells people, you are or you are not the damn father, okay? When it comes to one-year-old Dante, Pierre, you are the father. <laughs> And what is going on now is that we have a woman, um, her tweets going viral on social media, and basically she had a lab test, okay, Jaclyn Hill's lipsticks, and one of them came back positive for mold and yeast, okay? I'm going to go ahead and read this to you guys. Go ahead and check this out. So this woman at Nevermore says... On 6-23-19 at, at 8-12 p.m. CDT, approximately 120-hour microbial check confirmed positive for yeast and mold results on a lid sample of JCJC05ACF. I had mislabeled this sample on my 72-hour results. This is control freak, not hot toddy. This is from a swab of the cap of the component and all other samples are negative. So that person is saying that she tested all of Jaclyn Hill's lipsticks. A majority of her samples are negative, but this particular one came back positive for mold and yeast, okay? So that's what she's alleging. You know, could it be that all of Jaclyn Hill's products are contaminated? Maybe, maybe not. Could have been maybe a cross-contamination. Maybe, you know, her hands were damn dirty. You know what I'm saying? Maybe she did something to them. I don't know. But this whole situation is just getting crazier and crazier. I want you guys to go ahead and listen to some of what Jaclyn Hill had to say. Not about this particular situation, but just her addressing her lipstick drama in general. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Elf. <sighs> Sorry guys, I keep trying to record this and I've just been like so emotional, it's ridiculous. And I honestly am like afraid to get emotional on camera because I just know what people will say and I don't wanna seem like I'm the victim whatsoever. And I hope you know that's why I'm not crying. I don't cry over this because I'm like, oh, poor me, this just sucks. You know, it's like, I get emotional because I'm just so disappointed in myself that I could even somehow allow this to happen. Long story short, the lab that I worked with, I will never be working with again. Obviously, there's been many people fired over this. Um, we've got an entire new team that we are building now for quality control because obviously that didn't work. <sighs> and <laughs> I'm going to push back several launches that I have because it's just not like really hone in on this and learn from my mistakes and learn some very valuable lessons so that hopefully one day I can prove myself to you guys no matter how long that takes. But uh, in the meantime, I have decided and made the decision to give every single person who purchased one of my lipsticks a full refund. I think that that's the best thing that I can do at this point. I know that there are a lot of people out there. It doesn't look like it on social media, but with all the emails in the back end, there's a lot of people out there who love their lipsticks. And that's great. But I don't care. Like, I don't care if, you know, 195,000 people loved a lipstick. If three people are having an issue, like, that's that's what's gonna keep me awake at night. So it's really important to me that I make this right. So I'm gonna be issuing a full refund, including shipping and tax to every single customer from Jacqueline Cosmetics because that's the only thing that I feel like is gonna make this right. And I don't care about the loss of this money. I could give a damn, guys, like this is just, it's, you have no idea how embarrassing it is for me, but uh, I will do everything in my power to make this right going forward and learn from this lesson that God has given me and you guys don't have to do anything. There's no call to action. Even if you don't watch the story or care or you're just out there loving your lipstick, you're still gonna receive a full refund. You'll receive an email in the next 24 hours letting you know that it's being processed. And sorry guys, Instagram cut me off. Um, but what I was saying is that you're gonna receive an email in the next 24 hours letting you know 
now that your refund is being processed and you will have the money back in your bank account within seven business days. And that goes for everybody. Um, I feel like that's the only thing I can do at this point is just bite the bullet and refund you guys and just apologize to you and try to make it right. And I just want to get back to doing what I do and doing what makes me happy and doing what I'm good at. Sorry, I keep touching my hair. Like I like to like touch my hair obsessively even when it's up. So I like put it up and I still am like touching my head. Um, but yeah, I just wanna get back to what I do and do makeup tutorials and do what I love. And I'm sorry for anyone who got a lipstick that was not incredible. It breaks my heart, but the future is bright and there's gonna be really, really awesome things down the line. I just have to now, I mean, I thought I did what I had to do. I thought I did it all perfectly right and didn't cut any corners. I crossed every T and dotted every I, but I was wrong and things still slip through the cracks and I'm sorry, but I will make sure that that never ever happens again. So all right, so you guys just watched just a little bit of her response and she's saying that, you know, she doesn't care about the money. She's gonna refund everyone who was affected. I love how she says that she doesn't care if 195,000 people love her lipsticks but if only three people hate them it's gonna keep her up at night i also love how she couldn't look into the camera you notice her eyes kept darting every which way she's looking off to the side she's looking over here and it's like when you're being sincere and you really want to apologize for your fuck up and your mistake you're going to look dead into the camera and speak to people okay because when you're sitting here ready to try on cosmetics and put on makeup and teach tutorials you look dead into the camera so we should have gotten that same respect during this whole apology your eyes should not have been shifty and then darting every which way okay you know at this point i didn't buy not one jaclyn hill lipstick and damn it i want a refund okay i want a refund for all this fuckery that's going on on my damn timeline i want a refund because every time i log on to youtube something about jaclyn's on the damn trending page okay now as far as the mold and all that stuff like i said could it be strictly from jaclyn's products yes it could be or it could have been cross-contaminated from the person who, you know, who did the um, the testing. But I tend to believe the person who did the testing because they tested all the samples and they only found it on one. If they wanted to be shady, why not say that all 12 of them had mold? Who'd be none the wiser, you know what I'm saying? Another thing that bothers me with Jacqueline is that she obviously knows that her products are defective. She sees all the issues. She sees the people with the cut lips, the shards of plastic in the lipsticks, in the hairs, and everything else. And it's Instead of her being honest and saying, you know what, I rushed this, I failed, let me just do a recall. I mean, come on, even Jojo Siwa, she did a recall on her damn cosmetics when it came back that her cosmetics had yeast and mold and everything else. She recalled it, she lost money, but that's the right thing to do. But it's like Jacqueline Hill does not want to admit defeat. So she's going to keep on acting like it's just only 1% of her customers who are having this issue. And if you're having an issue, she can just refund you. It's going to take a long time to get your refund. So if you really want your money back I suggest that you contact your credit card company and you have your credit card company refund you for those lipsticks because waiting on Jaclyn Hill honey you might be waiting another fucking five years okay as long as they took it to roll this shit out it might take you five years to get your damn refund okay another thing that kind of bothers me with this situation is that she wants to talk about you know if only three people dislike it it's going to keep her up at night it's going to make her feel bad but the one person who initially was a fan and who asked her about her lipstick Jaclyn literally bit her head off and told her to go you know exfoliate her crust lips she didn't say crusty but y'all know what I mean another thing that just does not sit well with me is that this woman definitely has money to travel and live her best life what I found disturbing is that she says that she's been on the phone with the lab she's spoken to the lab she's talked to the lab via the telephone my thing is if you have hundreds of customers coming at you 24 7 on social media that their lipsticks are defective there's hair in the lipsticks there's shards of you know plastic you know potential mold i'm sorry i'm not going to be phoning the lab i'm taking a flight straight to la and i'm going to the lab myself to see what the f is going on okay so i don't understand this whole i'm phoning the lab i'm talking to the lab why are you not traveling to the lab you know what i'm saying looking at these people who basically have fucked up your brand you know what i'm saying let's just let's just put it out there they basically affected your brand to the fullest for the negative why are you not there holding them accountable why are you not there confronting them face to face why 
why you not showing your peoples who went out and bought your lipsticks to support you that look you guys I'm here I'm at the lab I'm trying to get you know down to the bottom of everything I'm trying to get everything figured out it's like she couldn't bother to do that so you know once again I'm not buying you know what the hell she's trying to sell her so-called apology her addressing it to me it comes out very very insincere okay that's just my personal opinion another thing okay that I find really interesting is this. She also pulled out receipts showing that, you know, these batches were supposedly made a month ago. And like I stated in my other video, it's very impossible to get a good product. You know what I'm saying? To get a good makeup product for that many lipsticks that she's ordering within a month. I think what happened is this, okay? I believe that there were some batches that were made in 2019, okay? But... She did not get rid of the original batches. I feel like the original batches from two years ago, she did not want to get rid of them because she didn't want to lose the money. So she felt, well, what can I do to make these, you know, to, to get these out there? What she did is basically mix some of the old batches with the new batches. So that way she would have receipts showing, hey, look, these were made in 2019. These were made a month ago. Okay? So that way she'd have those receipts. But with all the issues that are going on with these lipsticks, these lipsticks are obviously expired. The, the majority of the lipsticks are obviously expired. And I believe that the newer ones, the ones that tend to look a little bit better, those were the ones that were placed in the PR packages, okay? So Jaclyn Hill is not slick. I'm not buying anything she's damn selling. You know, at this point in time, she just needs to recall her products, especially now that people are coming back saying that they tested her lipsticks at the lab and some people are coming back with mold and stuff like that. That's not a good look. That's definitely a safety hazard. This goes beyond just regular YouTube drama, okay? So now in other YouTube beauty community news, I want to talk about Marlena Steele from Makeup Geeks. She made a really long, in-depth video, and I watched the whole thing, surprisingly enough, honey. You know, I had time to date, cuz. Today I got time, cuz! I sure did. Today I got time, cuz. Today I got time, cuz. Yes, cuz I had time to watch Marlena Steele's video and I watched the whole hour and 36 minutes and when I tell you Marlena spilled the damn tea, honey, she spilled all the damn tea on all of these damn big influencers. Some of them are good people behind the scenes, but a majority of them are definitely damn shady, okay? One thing I will say about Marlena is she did help to start this beauty community. I mean, I don't consider myself a part of the beauty community. That's just not my cup of tea. You know, I like you know lipsticks and I love watching people put on makeup and you know see what they do with eyeshadow I think all that shit is cool I watch y'all from afar okay I don't miss shit I watch all y'all I watch the beauty people I watch the gaming people you know what I'm saying I watch the conspiracy people so I, you know I'll keep my eye on everybody so Marlena's an OG she's been on here for years She's the one who kind of started this beauty community and she helped get a lot of people their start. You know, she gave them advice. She took them under her wing and everything else. She's been like the mama bear of the beauty community. And unfortunately, this same community has now kind of turned against her, especially this new generation, honey. <laughs> James Charles, you know, just being so arrogant and thinking they can tell somebody who's been in this this damn business, honey, when your mama was breastfeeding you, bitch, okay? When she was breastfeeding your ass, Marlena was putting in work in the makeup industry, so you can't come at her like you're gonna teach her a thing or two, okay? Now, Marlena has made some mistakes, and she said that she's owned up to that, especially with the whole Jaclyn Hill situation by not getting a contract first, thinking they were friends. And she found out in the long run that Jaclyn Hill is a shady fucking bitch. You know what I'm saying? She basically had her waste her money and, and, and product and everything else trying to help her, but then refusing to sign a contract. In the end, I was the one that pulled the con that, that stopped the collaboration, not Jaclyn. So because of that, there's this overall feeling that you guys think that I'm speaking up on certain issues right now, thinking that I have some sort of hatred towards Jaclyn. I don't, I never did. What I do have a problem with, however, is dishonesty. Mar Marlena revealed that she believes she knows which lab did this. On June 6th, 2016, it was a Monday, I was at this lab working on my concealers that I never launched. And I will show you pictures of them. These are my concealers. They had shards of plastic in them. They had fingerprints. They had hairs in them. They had black specks in them. Does that sound familiar? Whether it has like, 
you know, people are making assumptions that it's mold, it's fungus. I don't know. I can't say I'm not a chemist and we have to wait until they're tested. But however, even if there's a slight chance that there's something in here that could be a risk to anyone, why not just halt it? Why not just put a statement saying, don't use these. Let's, you know, wait to test them or whatever. But it was silence. So in this mind, now I'm getting upset because I'm like, okay, I'm truly concerned. This is my community too. And yes, I know I'm inserting myself into drama or whatever, but it's not... It was never some sort of hatred to her because we've we've been cool for many years. I have a problem with how the situation was handled because it affects the people using them, especially those with compromised immune systems, those who are pregnant, the elderly, because just God forbid, I'm not saying it's for certain, but if it has something that can make people sick, if it can, we don't know yet, it's not good. So just make a statement or recall it. That and the general audience as a whole, I really do care about that deserve to know, like this is standard production times. These are things that usually happen when you're making makeup. This stuff isn't adding up and that's all. So, right. and that's why I say, you know, with this whole situation, looking how everything has played out over the past few years, karma is very real. You may not get your karma the next day, even the next month. Sometimes karma has a way of coming up years later. Jaclyn Hill basically shitted on somebody who took her under her wing, who tried to help her out, who gave her all types of advice, who didn't look at her as competition because she could have. She could have been like, you know what? She's younger. You know what I'm saying? Her audience is growing and now she wants to start her own makeup line. Oh, I don't know because now she's not going to be helping makeup geek as much. Marlena never did that. She showed her the rope. She looked out for her. Marlena is the type from, from what I feel from that video. She has a big heart, just like me. She has a really big heart. She likes to see other people legitimately win, okay? She likes to look out for other people. And sometimes you have a big heart and you go out your way to help others. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying, it can come back to bite you in the ass. You live, learn, and you move on. And you just know not to make the same mistakes, not to be as trusting the second time around, okay? But she really went out her way to help Jaclyn Hill. And also, Jaclyn Hill helped her out as well because because Jaclyn Hill was definitely promoting Makeup Geek, okay? So they did help each other, but she really helped her with industry stuff, with teaching her about, you know, fulfillment and, you know, distribution and getting her to, like, you know, certain labs and different places that she should use, you know, to start her makeup line and just giving her a lot of, like, genuine advice that Jacqueline, if she would have reached out to somebody else, probably would have charged her an arm and a leg for that same advice, okay? So it's very funny that the same thing that Jacqueline did to this woman, where this woman ended up losing, you know, damn near a million dollars on this makeup that just sat and they had to throw out. Um, the same things happened to Jacqueline. So that's why I always say the same people that you see on your way up when you're climbing that ladder, be very careful how you treat people because the same ones you see on your way up are the same people you're going to see on your way down. And that's one thing we always say in the South, okay? So... I feel like everything that Jacqueline's going through is definitely karma for how she treated Marlena and other people. You know what I'm saying? You can't sit here and watch somebody lose money on something that, th that they try to help you with. And then now she's losing millions of dollars because of how her products came out. So karma is a real thing, okay? So you always watch how you treat folks. Another thing that I did like about Marlena Steele's video is that she also addressed the positives. She talked about how cool Patrick Starr was, how he still looks out for her to this day he'll call in and check in on her you know she talked about how Nikki Tutorials was this little young 14 year old girl you know bright eyed bushy tailed and you know how she helped her and how you know Nikki Tutorials is still really cool and down to earth even though she has men subs of subscribers I mean she talked very highly of some of these makeup people so it wasn't just all shade she was definitely very fair you know but I definitely liked how she went into details about the whole you know issue with her and Jacqueline and you know speaking out on her part of the situation and what happened and you know letting her voice be heard the part about James Charles and Nicole Concilio you know what I'm saying really surprised me I knew James Charles was messy but I didn't know she was going through all that when she got that deal with Netflix and James Charles basically embarrassed her called her that woman as if she was beneath him as if she didn't pave a way for people like James Charles to eat I'm getting emotional because I'm like this is supposed to be such a great day for me it's like a positive light with the that I've gone through before this, I was devastated. And so I still took the time to respond. I tried to be respectful in the beginning. I, I said, I tagged James. I said, I think it would be great to hear about your input from an influencer side as well. I did not approach them. They approached me and wanted to understand everything about the in beauty industry. It wasn't about influencer thing. And I know where this was coming from because James has been upset about that truth video. I'm gonna say it. 
hit dogs holler the loudest. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm going to be bold and say that because I never once said any names in that truth video for a specific reason. Talk about that in a second too. So it started going back and forth. I'm going to put up here the tweets that I said to James. I said, my point is not to belittle him, but to state that influence are just one aspect of the beauty industry. I'm coming from it, from my experience behind the scenes as well in front of the scenes. So anyways, that kind of all blew up to this day. I'm going to be honest. I'm still pissed about that. And because that day was ruined for me. And I think what upset me the most was you calling me that woman. I'm going to say this bluntly. I apologize if it offends anyone, but I'm going to be blunt. I would never, if it, even if it wasn't addressed at me, if it was addressed at someone and it was as public with the largest audience that you said called anyone of any age that woman, I'd be pissed. That is so disrespectful. And especially coming to someone as myself, who's been doing your job before you did myself and many others like Leisha, you know, X Sparkage, Pixie Woo, Wayne Goss, Nikki Tutorials, Candy Johnson, It's Judy Time. There's so many people that had done all of this stuff for free, did it out of the passion of it worked hard to try to make this beauty community what you know a, a reputable place and for you to disrespect me for that and call me that woman I'm that was wrong I'm sorry that was utterly wrong I know you said an apology later but this is what really bothered me was the apology came after I responded back showing that I was really upset from that so one thing that I don't like what I noticed with this new group of youtubers okay I'll just say this new generation of youtubers okay a lot of us who have been on this platform for years, myself included, Jackie Ina, you know, Marlena from Makeup Geek, um, Spoken Reasons, um, who else, some of the OGs, Daystorm, you know, a lot of us who have been on here for years and we've watched how much this platform has changed. Um, a lot of y'all would not be where you're at or be able to garner the amount of subscribers that you guys have now if it wasn't for people like us who've been here. Me speaking as somebody in the black commentary sector, okay? It's a lot easier for you guys to gain a following now. It's a lot easier for you guys to come in and only be on here after a year or two and gain millions of subscribers because y'all didn't have to go through all the bumps, the hardships, you know what I'm saying, and all the shit that we had to go through because when we came on here and we were talking and, and doing videos and stuff like that, we were trying to figure it out you guys were able to watch a blueprint and take it and run with it and you know basically create a more smoother process whereas we have to go through nooks and crannies and bump our head and you know get copyright strikes get channels taken down all types of nonsense that we've had to endure in the past eight to ten years where a lot of people who are just now starting out on youtube within the past year two three years it's a lot smoother for you guys it's a lot smoother transition okay because now everybody knows about subscribing everybody knows about you know liking and sharing but back then like we had to like literally beg people like please subscribe please share now it's just been ingrained in people so they hit subscribe and they come back and everything else whereas before it was always like that and I think you know with anything I don't care if it's the the comedy community where people were doing sketch comedy back then the gaming community the beauty community once money gets involved things just get ugly you know what I'm saying? When when a lot of people first started doing makeup and doing makeup tutorials, it was for the love. It was for them just wanting to teach people how to beautify themselves. You know, I still remember the days of Michelle Pham and being so proud when I saw her in that Dr. Pepper commercial. I would never forget that. You know, being in my room all those years ago, watching Dr. Pepper and seeing Michelle Pham, like, oh my God, that's a fellow YouTuber. I want to be like that one day, get my own, you know, pot commercial you know what I mean and seeing Day Storm when he first got his national Sprite commercial and seeing you know people just grinding from the bottom and getting it and then kind of going mainstream and it's like that's when the corporations came and when the corporations came that's when things got nasty that's when people thought that you know um they they, they just should get 30000 for a shout out, 60000 for a shout out. And I'm not knocking nobody, get your money, you know what I'm saying? But the, the money has definitely turned the YouTube community, not just the beauty community, but the YouTube community really ugly. Just all the shady stuff that goes on behind the scenes, people sneaking and flagging people's videos, trying to take people down, just all the fuck shit that people do. Even stuff I've been through behind the scenes, just the, some of the most shadiest shit that I won't speak on, you know what I mean? So it's gotten really ugly because of the competition and because of the money involved and I'm glad that Marlena spoke about that and she spoke her truth and I just liked it I thought that she was being very articulate you know what I'm saying she was being
being very honest, very open, very transparent. And most of all, the bitch bought receipts, okay? That's the most important. Don't just tell me about some shit. She had receipts for that ass. And I couldn't do nothing but respect that. You know what I'm saying? And she called out the people that need to be called out. And I'm sure they'll be in their feelings and they'll be making rebuttals and everything else. But this woman genuinely tried to help other people only for her to be shitted on time and time again. And I just think that's really unfortunate. And I know that because she's such a soft-hearted person, you know, she took it to heart. She was even crying in the video at different points. So, you know, I feel bad for her. I feel like this. With everything you go through in life, you just take it as a lesson learned. Even those who burn you, even those who treat you like trash, you don't allow that to hold you down. You don't allow that to define you. You just know them for who they are. You know what I'm saying? You put them in a certain box and you keep it moving and you keep living your best life. You keep chasing your your goals and you keep focusing on your blessings you know and that's what's going to happen to Marlena when you help people genuinely you know what I'm saying without wanting anything back and you're just a genuine person that will come back to you tenfold and that's why the people who are not genuine that's why they're going through the things that they're going through James Charles almost being canceled you know what I'm saying um Jacqueline Hill going through all the bullshit she's going through so I just found her video very very refreshing she said that basically she was spilling all this tea because now she wants to take a break she wants to move on from YouTube and focus on other things you know which if that's where her heart leads her by all means go on ahead and do that so I personally feel like Marlena's video was beyond needed okay she spoke about a lot of stuff the toxicity on YouTube especially in the beauty community and in other communities is just at an all-time high and it's just really disgusting how we're so quick to tear each other down and what's going to happen is that you know this small youtube community of just regular people y'all keep tearing each other down y'all keep on beefing and doing all this petty shit and when they start replacing you with, with you know a-list celebrities and people start subscribing to a-list celebrities and they no longer visit regular smuggler people's youtube channels anymore then you guys will understand where y'all fucked up you know because that's what's happening there's going to be a corporate takeover of youtube these celebrities Celebrities are coming to YouTube. They're seeing that there's a bag to get. They already have a built-in fan base from television, from the radio, from movies. And they're all swarming YouTube now, okay? YouTube is a new platform that everybody wants to be on. And in a minute, there's not going to be any room for just regular people to come on and make content. You know, to make videos, to, to talk about makeup, to do commentary. Because it's going to be saturated by celebrities. And that's what's happening. Like, why not pay a celebrity $30,000 to do a makeup shout out? than some, you know, Joe Schmo makeup artist who's been on here for a few years when we know, like, if we give that same 30 grand to, like, let's say, Miley Cyrus versus a Manny MUA, that's going to, you know, that's going to create more of a buzz going with Miley versus, like, a regular YouTuber. And because of all the drama, the toxicity, the negativity, that's what's going to happen in the future. That's what I foresee. So we need to tighten up as a community, not just in the beauty community, but all around YouTube. I don't care if it's the gaming community, the commentary community. Everyone needs to tighten the fuck up, point blank, period, okay? So that's my word on this whole Malena Stell situation and what she had to say about, you know, the beauty community and the influencers and stuff like that. And that's also my opinion on the whole Jaclyn Hill situation as well. Karma is real and she's definitely getting a good taste of it. All right, you guys. So we have some breaking news. So after Marlena's video went viral all over YouTube yesterday, um, a few hours later, of course, people started confronting Jaclyn Hill. They were also confronting James Charles and Nicole and many others, right? So this was one of the last tweets that Jaclyn responded to before she deleted all her social media accounts. So the person tweets Jaclyn. They say, at Jaclyn Hill, should have listened to Marlena. Jacqueline responds back and she says, I do not lab with the facility that she referred to. I left them a long time ago. She doesn't know the back end of my brand. And so after that, she deleted it per the comment underneath that commenter Shannon says that was deleted extremely fast. So I think she started feeling even more heat now that Marlena had put out her video. She's feeling more backlash, especially with all the stuff that's still going on with her lipsticks. So as of now, if you go to look up Jaclyn Hill on Instagram, um, Twitter, or Snapchat. I don't really go on Snapchat, so I'm not even going to bother checking. Basically, she's deleted her accounts amid all of this drama, amid all of this nonsense. And I think maybe it's for the best. I, th I know she'll be back. Trust me. A narcissist, they will always come back to the scene of the damn crime, okay? She'll be back. 
But I think it's important for her if she feels the need to take a break and get away from all these tweets and all these people coming at her and dragging her. I mean, she's been getting drugged now for about two damn weeks. So I think she needs to just take a mental health break, reassess everything, you know what I'm saying, and really try to figure out how she's going to come back from this. But getting tweeted at all day, every day, that's not healthy for anybody. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation. Once again, concerning Jacqueline Hill um, and her makeup, do you guys agree with what she had to say? Do you guys believe anything she had to say in that damn, you know, Instagram video? And then how do you feel about the person who said they found mold on the lipstick? Do you feel like that was a true test and that's what they really found? Or do you feel like it might be a situation where maybe they, you know, cross-contaminated the lipstick and they're just looking to go viral? And then last but not least, how do y'all feel about Marlena from Makeup Geeks video where she's addressing these influencers, bringing with and blasting bitches, okay? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces.